In today's project spotlight, I'm going to be talking about my red and white nine patch sampler quilt. What I made, how I made it, and what I learned. So in today's project spotlight, I'm going to be talking about my red and white nine patch sampler quilt. And you can see the image of what the whole quilt looks like here, but I'm going to be sharing some of the details about this project. So this was a project that I made back in 2017 and I made it because I was looking at traditional blocks and I realized that many traditional blocks were just variations of a nine patch block. So I wanted to put together a sampler with some of these different options. So here is my first nine patch block and this is what people usually think of as a nine patch block. It's three squares across and three squares down and usually they're done in alternating grid, kind of like a checkerboard, light, dark, light, dark. And so uh, that is a really nice block, but then I realized Friendship Star is also three by three, and the only difference is that three of these pieces are half square triangles. And then if you go here to a shoe fly block, this is also three by three, also four of the pieces are half square triangles, but it's a different orientation. So if you see this block and this block, they're made with the same pieces. They're just laid out differently. And so I came up with six blocks that were all based on a traditional nine patch. And there are more than six. This is not exhaustive, but I came up with these um, to do a sampler quilt. And I also realized that this was going to be a really good quilt for beginners and people that want to learn traditional quilting techniques. Because if you start with a nine patch block and then get gradually more complex, then you'll learn many of the skills you'll need for many different um, quilt patterns. So this is a workshop that I teach. I've taught this class to a lot of people. It's a great introduction to quilting and it's a really fun quilt. So when I made this one, this one is kind of scrappy. It is red and white and I've used a bunch of different red fabrics. And you can see in these blocks, this is one red fabric. This is another red fabric. That's another red fabric. And then some of the blocks do have more than one red fabric in the blocks. And then it's difficult to see on the camera, but there is also some different white fabrics. And so some of them are white um, with a tone on tone white fabrics, and some of them are just flat white, but there are different ones. So you can see a little difference between some of the white in the blocks and the white in the sashing. So this quilt is made up of 12 blocks. So they're set in a three by four layout. And then there is sashing between the blocks. And then on the border, there's actually three borders. There's a white border, then a narrow red border, and then a wide white border. And so that just really sets it off, especially with that red border. It just really adds a lot to finish it. And then this quilt, I free motion quilted. And so if you see a lot of the quilts that I make, I do tend to do simple quilting. So quilting with straight lines on most of my um, projects. But this is one that I did free motion quilt. And so each block is quilted a little bit differently. So you can see on this nine patch block, I quilted it with traditional orange peel. And then this, the Friendship Star, I quilted it with feathers. And so I just took the opportunity to uh, look at each block individually. So each block is quilted differently. If we look down at this block, this is a double nine patch. So it's a nine patch made out of little nine patches. You can see there's little hearts in all the shapes and then hearts in um, these background squares as well. Uh, this one, the rail fence is quilted with this squiggly line. And so this was just such a fun project to um, look at each block individually and to really practice free motion quilting and practice fitting free motion quilting onto the shapes that are in the um, 
piecing. So what I learned from this quilt is that if you're concerned about color, anytime you go with just white and another color, that's gonna be a great color combination. Red and white, blue and white, those are classic, but any color combination uh, will look good. Um, red and white is one of my favorites. And then something else I learned is that even though these blocks are all beginner friendly blocks, they're pretty simple blocks, they do make a great project. Projects don't have to be really complicated to be beautiful looking projects. And then the last thing I learned was uh, that free motion quilting can be fun and that when you step back and look at the big picture, then it's beautiful. If you look at this really closely, for example, if you're in the middle of free motion quilting, then you'll see all the little pieces where my stitches aren't exactly the same length or there's little waves in the lines that I need to be straight or things don't line up exactly. And that's what you notice. And a lot of people struggle with that when they're free motion quilting. They're working at it from inches away and they're trying to do something and it's not looking perfect. And free motion quilting does take a lot of practice. Practice is the best way to improve your skills. And so this quilt is not perfectly free motion quilted. I don't think it's gonna win any awards, but when now I step back and look at it, I love it. I love the way the quilting looks and I don't notice all the little pieces that I noticed when I was sewing it. I can step back and see the big picture and say, wow, that quilting looks really great. It adds a lot of texture to it and another design to it. And I really like how it turned out. So if you wanna learn free motion quilting, remember that it just takes practice. Practice, practice, and there's nothing that you can do uh, to shortcut that. You can't sit down and do something perfectly the first time you do it. And this, the other thing is to remember that sometimes you need to take a step back um, when you take a step back both with distance and look at it from further away, and you take a step back in time, so a year from now, then you're gonna look back on your project differently than you do right when you're working on it. So even though this is not a new quilt, it was a quilt that I made a while ago, I do still really like it, and I do still use it as a sample when I'm teaching a nine patch sampler workshop. Um, if you are interested in making your own nine patch sampler quilt, you can check out the link. I do have an online option for the nine patch sampler workshop, or you can try and catch me wherever I am teaching in person. If you wanna see more projects that I've made, you can check out my project spotlight playlist, or you can check out my quilt gallery at ebitastudio.com.